Today on Cloud Slaw, we're going to learn about salmon spawning, X Wings, and Event Bridge. And trust me, that'll make sense in just a few minutes. In our recent labs, we've set up monitoring using various security tools. Uh, the key ones we've gone over are CloudTrail for all of our log collection. Uh, then we set up Guard Duty, which is going to give us alerts for its basically threat detection. Uh, and then we enable Security Hub, which is going to aggregate all the findings and the events from all of the various security tools that we might deploy in AWS. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to deal with those events that come out. And we're learning what an event is and why it's very different than a log file uh, across basically all of the cloud providers support this. And an event is, uh, the way I like to think about it, it's a stream of activity that's occurring in the cloud platform. And, and this is really wild, and it's different than dealing with logs and such that like we've always historically had. So this is where my analogies with the salmon come in, and I don't have a stuffed salmon, so I'm going to use a Lego X-Wing. The way that I like to think about and describe events is it's this constant stream like the salmon running under the water. And what happens is, is when an event occurs, it pops up and then it drops back down into the water. And sitting on top, we're kind of like the bears. If you've ever watched the salmon swimming upstream, uh, actually, it's kind of funny. There's an axe throwing bar by us and all they do is like show on the big screen uh, uh, salmon and bears and stuff. <laughs> anyway, when the salmon jumps up, the bear can grab it and do something with it. And that's what an event is in a cloud provider. So we don't have a bear. Uh, let's just imagine that there is a Star Destroyer sitting up there. And so when that X-Wing pops up out of the stream, when that event occurs, it's not saved anywhere. You can't replay it. You can't do anything with it. It's just the system saying, this happened. For example, that a guard duty detected something. Now, what we can do is we can be the bear, we can be the star destroyer, and we can go ahead and capture that event. And we do this using a tool called EventBridge. So EventBridge is the central bus for events within AWS that has customers we can access. And EventBridge, it, it doesn't do really anything until we tell it to do something. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create something known as an EventBridge rule. And this is something that does exist on all the cloud providers. You would, uh, uh, you can do the same thing in Azure. You can do the same thing at Google. When we create the rule, what the rule is going to do is if the pattern matches, so if the ship coming out of the stream, the event, uh, is an X-Wing, the pattern match, then let's do something with it. And that something is really robust and powerful, all the different options we have. Uh, we could save it into S3, so now it becomes like a log file. We could send that event over to uh, Lambda function, a, a, the basically code that's going to do something with it. Or in our case today, we're going to send it to a simple notification service topic. And this is why I brought up EventBridge today and why we're do using it in a security context, even though it's an operational tool. Because EventBridge is how we can get the stream of activity occurring in our environments. You can uh, trigger on CloudTrail events, you can trigger on Guard Duty events, or in our case, we're just gonna set it up for Security Hub, which means that all of the events generated by any of the security tools in our environment are going to be going to the event bridge. We're gonna build a pattern to match on Security Hub. So you can think of, as we talked about before, all those events feed into Security Hub from all the different tools, Security Hub is going to put all of those in one account and in one region. So I can build one event bridge rule and take that those events that match that pattern of Security Hub, and then I can forward it somewhere. In our case, we're going to forward it to email. This is absolutely not what you would want to do in a real environment. We don't want to be dealing with email alerts for security. We'd send things off to a security tool uh, or we'd save it into a log file someplace for later analysis. But it works well for what we're setting up and to teach the concept about capturing events, capturing security events, and then doing something with those events. 
Now, there's a lot more to EventBridge. For example, uh, at work, my commercial product, we actually tap into the event stream for customers. They can actually send us all of their events from their event bridge to our event bridge, and then we can do things with it. Uh, you can publish your own events to EventBridge. So this could be cool for your application logging. You could send like application security things into an EventBridge that then your own tooling can pick up, uh, can pick up on. But the core thing to keep in mind and the really uh, key concept you need to understand from an operational standpoint for EventBridge is that uh, events are always occurring and EventBridge is a way of tapping into those events and then doing something with them. And we do that with a rule that matches the pattern of the event. Now, those of you who are actual uh, AWS uh, general engineers, you're probably ripping your hair out now because I've skipped a lot, but this is the core of what we need to know for today is how events occur, how you have to build a rule to match on it. And then once you capture that, like capturing the X-wing in that tractor beam or the bear catching that salmon, we can do something with it. And in our case, we're gonna pop it over to email. Uh, in real life, we could actually send it to there's whole sorts of realms of better places to send these events. And as an aside, events are amazing. It is one of the things that makes cloud, uh, gives us these capabilities that we don't have in traditional infrastructure. Uh, we can build entire application architectures that are triggered by these different events and event bridges, uh, or in Azure, they call them event buses. So it's really wild, really powerful, really capable. But as with all of our labs, we have to keep it relatively simple uh, so that we can just kind of build up our knowledge. Now, why does this matter for security? Because all the security tools will build events and we can even build event bridge rules to match on things like, uh, for example, in CloudTrail, if you have data events turned on, which is the thing that would monitor S3 buckets, which we have not turned on yet, there's an API call called delete objects. And that can sometimes be indicative of ransomware. Uh, now you might be using it for real, but maybe not. You could actually build an event bridge rule to alert you on that. Build an event bridge rule for any creation of an IAM user. We're gonna learn how to do a little of that, but we're really gonna use more advanced tools for those things. But the core principle you need to understand is that real-time stream of events is always occurring and we can tap into those and we can use those for our security purposes. All right, real short lecture today, not a whole lot to go into. Uh, and for the lab, we're gonna go, we'll create a new notification topic in our security audit account because before we created our management account uh, for our billing alerts. So we're not gonna use our management account anymore. And then after we create that, we're gonna subscribe to that topic. And then we're gonna build an event bridge rule that's gonna forward any of our security hub findings to us over event bridge. And because we have guard duty feeding into security hub, that means that will feed any of our guard duty findings into security hub, into event bridge, and send us a notification over email. Let's get to it. For this lab, start by logging into your access portal, and then we're gonna to go to security audit, and we're gonna to go to security full admin. Now, if you recall, we already set up security hub, and we set US West 2 as our home region in the security audit account. So I'm just checking, we have Oregon as our uh, the region that we are currently in, and I already know that security hub is up and running. The first thing we need to do is set up our simple notification service topic. Whoops, typed a little extra there. Simple notification service. And this is the easiest part. We're just gonna call it security alerts. Actually, let's be a little clear. Let's call it security hub alerts. So we've created security hub alerts and we're gonna go to the next step. And we want this just to be standard, and this should look familiar. We have uh, we did this very similarly, although last time I believe we used infrastructure as code. Can't even remember everything that I do. Uh, and then to use this, uh, we need to have a display name. You don't have to have one, but I, I do like to put one in there in case we decide to send ourselves text messages. Um, definitely don't do that. Uh, that's not part of our lab today. Uh, and we don't need to worry about any of the other security things uh, that are here. We're not going to be encrypting it. That's typically if you're using it for an internal bus, you're not going to be able to read the encrypted email, uh, uh, encrypted uh, if it's we send it to ourselves an email. Uh, the access policy is who can use the topic. Because this is isolated in our security audit account and everybody here should have access to uh, the topic, we're going to leave it at that. 
Uh, and again, we're not monitoring for sensitive data. There's a lot of really cool features with SNS that they've added over the years. All right, well, let's go create topic. And a lot of this is because SNS is used not just to send messages out to email or something, but you can use it internally as a message bus when you're building your applications. It's actually some kind of interesting operational things if you want to compare uh, Security Hub, sorry, not Security Hub, uh, Simple Notification Service and EventBridge. Uh, I've actually used both in app architectures to do the same thing. With that said, let's just go create our subscription. So we're going to do create subscription, and the protocol we want for this will be email. We don't need to say JSON because it's just going to be JSON. And then we decide where we're going to send it. And I'm just going to send it to my normal uh, email address. But you could actually specify a, a dedicated address to that for like a security team or a, another one of your email addresses using plus addressing so you can automatically filter, filter it into a different folder. And I'm going to create subscription. Okay, now, as we did last time, if you recall, pending confirmation. So what I'm going to do is pause the video, go to my email, and I'm going to pull that over here and then click through it and we'll uh, confirm the subscription. It took only a few seconds. I have my uh, email that came in for the subscription. So I'm going to go confirm subscription and let's pick the same browser I'm working in and boom, that subscription is confirmed. So everything is set. All right. So with that out of the way, Let's go to EventBridge. Amazon EventBridge. And as we talked about, we want to create an EventBridge rule. Remember, I said there's all sorts of crazy and advanced stuff. We can use EventBridge for a lot, a lot of different things. Uh, and we're going to keep it really simple and use the core capability, which is that EventBridge rule. Uh, which is interesting, if you're an old timer, we used to call these CloudWatch rules, but then they really expanded things and created the new service called EventBridge. So let's create a rule, and our rule name is going to be Security Hub Findings, because that's what we're going to be pulling. Uh, let's make sure I get the capitalization right. And then we can put in a description. Now look, everything is in your account today, but someday you might, for institutional knowledge, need to actually have things prepared for somebody else. So let's build good habits, kind of like commenting code. And we'll say uh, all findings from Security Hub. Because that's exactly what this is going to do. And then the event bus is our default event bus. So that's the only one that we need to worry about today. Uh, you can actually add different event buses, which can hook you into partners or different kinds of things. But the default is just kind of the base Amazon event bridge. Now we want to enable the rule on the selected event bus, and it's going to be a rule with an event pattern, which is different than doing it with a schedule. So you can actually have things set so that the rule is done on a, the, like a cron job. Uh, we're going to do it with an event pattern and click next. Now the event source is going to be AWS events or event bridge partner events. We're not going to be dealing with custom events or anything else. This is one thing I do not like about the user interface. It puts the sample event optional for testing here, but we want to go down to the creation method. And in our case, we're going to go to custom pattern in the JSON editor because I have pre-built it. Now, just so you know, you could click down here. So you can go to AWS services and we could go to uh, let's see. So the problem is, is you never know if it's Amazon security hub or if it's just security hub or if it's going to be AWS security hub. looks like in our case, it would be security hub and then event type all events. Uh, but that pattern is not actually going to work because we need certain specific events to actually get the findings out. And this is why you have to be very careful with using the pattern builder, because if you don't know what you're doing, you'll actually grab the wrong events. Instead, we're gonna go custom JSON. We're gonna highlight that little one that I put in there and delete it. And I'm gonna paste in, oops. Give me one second here to pull it. Okay, I had to pull it off my clipboard, paste it in. This is the pattern that we want. So the source is obvious. So this is the service that is generating the event. In this case, it's Security Hub. And then the detail type is 
basically part of what is the event. And you can go through, there's JSON structure for all of this, uh, JavaScript object notation, which is the format all of these are built in. And as a reminder, that's what this is. Everything in AWS for the most part is gonna be done in JSON when we're dealing with raw patterns. And the detail type is any security hub findings that are imported. Uh, now that's important because this is going to trigger the event when the finding is first imported, uh, as opposed to there's a lot of other events that Security Hub will generate. This is the one we want. This is the one that will give us the information we need. Okay, with all of that set, let's go to next. Now the target. So our target is gonna be an AWS service. And let's zoom in a little bit here. And the target type we want is gonna be SNS and SNS topic. And then we only have the one topic, which is our security hub alerts. And remember, we are already subscribed to that. And we don't need to worry about any of these additional settings because we're just sending it over. This is about as simple as it gets for creating an event bridge rule. We click next. We don't need any tags in this case. We click next and we get to review it. So rule detail enabled. There's our event pattern for security hub. And our target is the security hub alerts SNS topic not using any tags, create rule. All right, so we're not gonna test this one right now because we would need a security hub finding uh, in order to do that or a guard duty finding. And if you do get one of those and you don't know what it is, go ahead and give me an email. But that's uh, really straightforward and simple. Again, as a reminder, the way this is going to work now is anytime any of our security tools find something, that's gonna be fed. And it doesn't matter what account or what region it's in. Throughout the entire organization, anytime one of those tools finds something, it's going to feed that centrally to Security Hub that's located in US West 2, Oregon, in our security audit account. And then once Security Hub imports that finding, and typically this happens in near real time, it's very fast, We it's going to, that event is gonna pop up and our event bridge rule is going to grab it because it recognizes that event is from Security Hub and it matches that pattern of being a new imported finding. And it's going to send that over to SNS and it's going to go ahead and email us. And there's a lot of other stuff flowing across that event bridge that we can build rules to capture, but this is the only one we're working on today. Uh, and everything is all wired and set in place. And in some of our sooner labs, we'll actually start playing a bit more with things that might generate findings. And I'll let you know when to expect one. Again, if you get one that's unexpected, feel free to explore it yourself or drop me a line and I'm more than happy to help you. That's it. We're done with this week and we'll see you next week.